Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Starscape Gaming and a new series that we're starting in Planet Zoo. Now I know this has probably been done to death and let's just be honest, it's extremely rare to be able to do anything that someone has not already done and sometimes done multiple times. With that being said, we're going to start a new series in Planet Zoo with a focus on the basics. Now I've been playing Planet Zoo since it first came out in November of 2019, but there is still one thing in the game that I've just never done, and that's go into career mode. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Along the way, we're going to be meeting some new and interesting characters and really nailing down the basics. So that if you're new to the game, when we start building our own zoos, you can follow along. Or if you're a veteran like myself, Sometimes it's nice just to step back to the basics and see what we've forgotten along the way. If you like Planet Zoo videos, give this video a huge thumbs up, or you could leave an emoji of your favorite animal down in the comment section for the sake of engagement. With all this being said, let's go ahead and hop right into Planet Zoo. Okay guys, and here we are. We're going to start with the stately homeschooling Goodwin House, renovated and renamed after its purchase by Bernard Goodwin. In the 1980s, Goodwin House has since become one of the most respected zoos in the country. More recently has undergone further renovations to update many of the habitats and facilities, but due to various issues, the work hasn't quite been completed, which is where we come in. So we're gonna go ahead and start new difficulty. Let's just say easy since we're starting off super easy and we're gonna hit start. And here we are, the Goodwin house. Ah, hey yo, at Hema too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, 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 sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of <sighs> slipping back into the Planko language. <laughs> I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. We're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. It's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you in at the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. Less shouting that way. Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma because we're about to get really hands-on. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. Okay, guys, we have already met Bernie and his assistant. We're going to go ahead and do exactly what they've asked for us to do. We're just going to go ahead and zoom down into the grizzly bear. Did you know that grizzly bears also known as Ursus Arctos Horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year. <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that too. <laughs> Select one of the bears and you'll bring up its information panel. This is where you can find out all kinds of information about your animal. But for now, let's enjoy this magnificent animal. Why don't you select the camera at the bottom of its information panel? All right, so that's going to be right here. See, now this is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I'm really enjoying the camera view on this. As you may or may not know, Planet Zoo does have a great camera system where you can really get up close and personal with your animals. But let's go ahead and hop on over to the lion enclosure as she's asked for us to do. Real quick, let's take a look at this. Look at their habitat here. So nice. I love the way that they terraformed the land and really created them a cave to basically live in, as well as a nice water feature. This is a very nice enclosure. But we'll head on over to our lions. Panthera Leo Leo. All the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride. Although prides of that size are pretty rare. How about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. So one thing I really like and I, I think that we'll probably end up doing at some point is having this type of enclosure for our lions as well, built up of rocks and things of that nature to keep them in. And then they fill the privacy, but the guests still have a wonderful view at being able to see the animal. That's one thing I do enjoy about this game is just really being able to be extremely creative with our enclosure. So let's go ahead and see exactly where Nancy wanted us to go now. Ah, back over this way and into this enclosure. As you can see, it's a lovely space for animals, but it's missing a certain something. Well, two somethings. 
warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. All right, so we'll go down here to animal trading. There we are, a pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just click on them and select Adopt from the side menu. Normally, the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. The last thing I need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants. What's wrong with ordering a dozen elephants? So we'll click on the animal and adopt. When you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade center where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So how about you move them into their new home? So doing that, we'll go over here. We'll click on the trade center. Select both of them our common warthogs into zoo. And since we are currently in the enclosure, we can just click the ground. For an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, collect your animal and deliver them to your selected habitat. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. But I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right, let's get the warthogs habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthogs nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. All right, so we're going to come down into Habitat. A small food trough will cost us right about $100. Let's place it right about here in this dirt area. And then also we need a water bowl for them. And we can place that maybe right over here. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. So we can go into enrichment items and mud bath, and it will pull up our mud bath. And let's go ahead and put that front and center where the guests can see it. Nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and what's-its all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. All right, so we're about to head over to the ostriches. Let's see if uh, one of our warthogs, though, is going to jump into the mud bath. There he goes now, and it's in. No rolling around or anything, just looks like it. Oh, going to lay down in the mud bath. Ah, feeding time. All right, so let's leave them. Let's run over here and see what we need to do next. Oh, before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, let's pause the game. Just click the pause button in the bottom right corner. Ah, that's more like it. A quick break. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. All right, so we'll go down into barriers and habitat gate, and it's going to match. So we'll just go ahead and place that just inside. If it's purple or red it will not work if it turns blue you're good to go right let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches and i want to start down at this end and we will just complete out this barrier and good work now you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment at least not without a step ladder <laughs> But seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. So I think the best area to do that would be right along this walkway. So we'll come down here, we'll select this and change just a few of these out. There we go. Adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. The last thing we need to do is to add a donation box. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. So let's go ahead and throw down a donation box right over here next to now, the glass. Before we adopt our ostriches, you should click the play button. After all, if the game's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches, eh? And I do not like this. I'm trying to see if it will allow me to adjust the entire perimeter. It will not... Let me adjust just this corner. We'll have to leave it that way. Let's go ahead and unpause Tom. By the way, as well as pausing the game, you can speed the game up by clicking on the fast forward button. All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. So we're going to go back down to animal trading. And here are our four ostriches. Ostrija. I'm not sure what the plural for an ostrich is. We'll select all four of these dudes and send them into the zoo. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, 
water station and an appropriate food enrichment item. And so for the ostrich, we're gonna use a slow feeder and a small water trough. Put our water trough over here next to the rock. And the slow feeder is a enrichment item. So we're also going to be putting in a large food bowl. Let's put it back here a little closer to the house, right there. Oh, good to see the ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Well, Bernie certainly seems impressed. So now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, Let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. So you'll find that in facilities, staff facilities, and we're just gonna go with a Planet Zoo keeper hut we'll small. Rotate the keeper hut to get it to connect up to the path. So to rotate, we press and hold Z on the keyboard if you're playing on a computer and spin it around until it lines up with the proper pathing. And then you can push or pull however you want to, and then just click to put it down. This keeper hut only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Something that all facilities, shops, and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? So we'll go ahead and place this transformer in a location where our mechanics can get to it. They haven't been introduced to us yet, but we do know that that is a feature of the game. We'll place it right here. Work. Now the keepers can start using the hut to prepare food. And thanks to where you've put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on to your next objective then. Bengal Tigers. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. So we will head over to the Bengal Tigers in just a moment. But first, I wanted to take a look inside the Keeper Hut. So you can actually see they have done a great job as far as actually decorating the insides of these. You can see that there's multiple size gloves utensils for cutting up food they have scales they have information regarding the germs and things of that nature food of course food sitting out wouldn't be very good but they have done a great job actually decorating these and allowing us to actually be able to see into them and it not just being a blank building so with that being said let's go ahead and zoom way out so that we can see where we need to go for our bengal tigers and that's going to be right over here righty your next job is to build a habitat from scratch <laughs> and concrete and glass i expect so go ahead and build it just make sure that the habitat includes that big hole we've dug oh and don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier that would be pretty important oh, and make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers so now they're giving us a few other options we can go all glass if we wanted to and you can see different levels of the barrier so for example concrete is a resilience of six it will deplenish at a moderate rate it's not climbable and it is watertight the red brick is going to diminish at a higher rate and it is not climbable but it is watertight and then of course taking a look at the glass it depreciates pretty low it is transparent it is not climbable which is important when you get into animals that can climb and it is also watertight but i think we'll go with the red brick just because i feel like that's the vibes that everything else around here is kind of throwing so we'll go with the red brick we'll start off in this corner and become obstructed and we're just going to run it straight through here adjusting ever so slightly for the curve that is coming up and we can go ahead and make that little turn there and we'll make this turn here as well following the path straight on up now i do not like the corners we will hopefully if it will allow go back and fix the corners i think this one will allow us to fix the corners just because uh, they're asking us to build the entire habitat enclosure at this point that is now built but if we click right here approximately in the center we should be able to yep put down an additional piece of wall and we can go ahead and square up these corners just a bit make it look a bit nicer so we'll come back over here click plus move that out and we'll do the same thing right back here there we go and now i don't think guests are actually ever going to be back here because this is uh this is a staff path they haven't gotten into telling us that yet but we know from our own experience that this is a staff path and i'm hesitant about putting down the gate because i believe that she'll start popping up and talking again but as you can see you can put a a keeper gate on any of the paths but we do have we have a transformer there oh we had a keeper hut here somewhere very near but we'll go ahead and we'll place the gate here now 
Bernie takes safety very seriously at his zoos, so we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? <laughs> the way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Now, highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. And as we do that, we can just pull up or down on the barrier itself, changing the height. Now, it does cost money to do that as well. Did she say exactly the height? this needs to be because it is specific to the now animal you've got all of the perimeter selected you can increase the height of it by clicking and dragging the barrier height tool upwards you'll want to make sure it reaches a height of at least 3.7 meters and that's going to be in your lowest now point that the habitat is in place don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas so we'll go back and we'll put in the donation box in just a minute what i do want to do is go into the barriers and put in some glass i'm thinking that we can put in glass throughout this area because i've noticed that there is a train that runs through here and it would be kind of nice for the people on the train to be able to see as well as the guests walking by can't really do anything about the concrete barriers in the center there but we can also put in a couple right here so if someone were to be sitting on the bench kind of chilling they could watch the tigers as well so we'll go in and facilities and then guest facilities and add a couple of donation bins okay that's the throughout. habitat boundary complete the habitat gates in place and most importantly the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore i think it's time we adopted those tigers all right so we're going to go ahead and adopt the tigers go into animal trading i don't know why it says animal storage but we go up here to animal market and we can see our two tigers. We're gonna spend a total of about $22,000 roughly on our tigers. Go ahead and select both of those and then go into animal storage, select both of our tigers and send them Whilst to the zoo. Trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers. Let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. Add a suitable feeding station for them. So they need a large food tray. So we will just place that about right over here on this hill. This time, instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Some animals need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice refreshing drink. So underwater tool, we do have multiple options. We have calm, rough, and then we can remove the water. So if you just kind of mouse over the hole, it'll show you what a valid connection is and what a non-valid or obstructed connection is. And we can just click on the location where it says yes, it's valid. Do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? So I do know our big cats love a good rubbing post. So we'll go ahead and put one of those down. All of the cats and some of the canines in this love the blood pumpkins as well. So we'll go ahead and okay, put those down really as well. Starting to take shape. Now. The tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. So for the purposes of this, Currently, I'm thinking that we're just going to go ahead and utilize the blueprint that they've given us. And I'm thinking the best location for that is going to be kind of back here in the corner a bit. That way they can get away and hide while the guests can still kind of see them. So we'll just plop that down right in here. Now, if this were me, I would have done something different with the vegetation, but I didn't build this one. Oh, poor Dabs. I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. And we will do that in just a moment. It's going to drive me absolutely crazy. I just want to move the plants around a little bit so that they're not directly in the tiger's enclosure. And some of these may end up disappearing anyway. They may be the incorrect type, but for now, they now have a nice... Like, and our tiger is using the scratching post that we put in. Rightio, click on the terrain tab. That way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about the different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. So they are definitely looking for more soil. Editing tool, select painting and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare. So we do have two different options for soil. We have heavy and light soil because they want a lot of it. We'll take down our brush size just a little bit and let's do some heavy soil in and around their enclosure and maybe right around the edge of the pool as well where it looks like maybe they have walked 
and getting a little lighter as we continue out by keeping an eye on the amount of soil that we have given them now they probably would have walked around quite a bit around this area as well as this area and short grass they definitely would like shorter grass so we will take away some of the long grass until we have it in the green and it would not be common to see long grass near a watering hole where they have been walking around it a lot and go back to our soil and just a bit more soil throughout for them right then all animals need plants and trees from their own biome or continent. You know, deserts, savannas, or Asia, Europe, that sort of thing. It looks like these tigers need a few more plants in their habitat. The tigers will also want a certain amount of their habitat to be covered by those plants. To find out which plants to use and how many, select a tiger and go to the Environment tab. Now, as you can see, some of the plants currently in the habitat aren't quite right for the tiger, like the wattle bushes. You can remove them if you want. And I think we will. So we're going to start by removing the plant species that are not from their area. Mm -mm. They say the good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. Even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. Right, let's head over to the Indian peafowls. I've been told that we need to improve their social welfare. All right, so now we have to head over to our Indian peafowl and check on their social welfare. Apparently, they're not happy. This is a beautiful enclosure. I just want to take a moment before we actually drop down in there to take a look at this enclosure that the, that the game did. I love the hedges and everything that they did. Very nice. But let's go ahead and drop in just here. Find one of the peafowls and select them to open their information panel. Then we can have a good gander at how they're doing. Although technically, I suppose Gandarin would just be for geese. All right, so here we have Phil. Uh, now, they've clearly got plenty of space and they're not stressed, but it looks like their social group isn't quite right. So let's find out more. Click on the social tab at the top of their information panel to see what's wrong. Right, as you can see, the peafowlers need their population to be larger. To solve this little problem, you'll need to adopt three more female peafowls. Off you pop to the animal market then. All right, so this is actually showing the animals that are in the enclosure currently. That's our zoo overview. So we need to adopt three more of the peafowls, three more female peafowls. Go back to the animal marketplace and we will adopt three more of the Indian peafowls. Go into animal storage and go ahead and send them into the zoo. Good work on those peafowls. I expect they'll be delivered soon. But sadly, it sounds like our snow leopard is a bit grumpy. Let's head over there and see what's wrong with her. Zoo seems to have quite a few problems. So we're going to go over and take a look at the snow leopard and see what's going on with her since she is apparently grumpy currently. Just like people, animals can suffer from stress if things aren't quite right. You know, like when you see someone put in the milk before the tea bag. <laughs> In the case of these snow leopards, they're a bit stressed by their lack of privacy. You can lower their stress levels by swapping out the normal glass barrier by their cave for one-way glass. It's not a cheap option, but I think they're worth the expense, don't you? All right, so that is what we will start doing. We'll go ahead and swap it out right here. Edit barrier and one-way glass. When an animal isn't in its natural biome, it's probably going to be too hot or too cold. Unsurprisingly for the snow leopards, it's, it's too hot. Even with the terrible British weather, you should help cool it down by adding some coolers to their habitat. So this is animal welfare, habitat, as you can temperature. See, we already have one cooler in there. Let's pop some more down and get as much of the habitat as chilly as we can. And we'll do that in just a second, but also we can have a water heat map, a power heat map, buildings. You can see buildings that positively and negatively affect your guests. If one of these locations were near a guest facility, it would negatively affect those guests, but we will get into that. For now, let's go ahead and just hop into our habitat and heaters and coolers. And we're just going to place a couple of these dudes in here to cool down this habitat. As you can see, it does have an AOE or an area of effect. So placing one about in the center should do it. And we can click on that and see what the temperature is set to. We can adjust the range for that as well. So we'll drop it down, make it cold. And is, that is starting to cool down the enclosure, which you wouldn't think would be possible considering this is an open enclosure. And I think maybe just one more right over here, kind of hidden back behind the bushes. And we can adjust that one as well. That's its range 
of effect and we can turn down the temperature there i think i turned down the range on this one i did let's increase the range but adjust the temperature down silly me so let's go ahead and go into there as it's cooling down we can add snow and because of the coolers the snow should stay where is our snow leopard where did it disappear to we can click on it and see how it's feeling oh hello, hello. I'm in the tree, of course, and everything appears to be good. Take a look at the terrain environment. It's not crazy about some of these things. So let's go ahead and remove the things that it's not crazy about. And we do not yet have the ability to place any more plants in here. Now she should have come back already and told us the next thing to do. Go ahead and crank that down. And if you come up here, you can actually turn it on and off. One thing I'm wondering is if maybe it's too cold at this point for them. So we can actually go into environment Zoopedia map and we can look at what their temperature would be. So this is going to be in Celsius between negative 40 and negative 22 degrees Celsius. We can change this later on in the settings to actually represent Fahrenheit for where I am in the world, but between negative 40 and negative 22 degrees. So we are at negative 20 and it may just be the fact that that one part of the area right over there just isn't covered so let's take this one and move it back just a little bit see if that helps five minutes later all of that should give you a pretty good understanding of how to make animals happy so i'd like you to go and check on all the other animals in the zoo and fix up any issues with their habitats not bad not bad at all i think it's fair to say that you've passed the first part of your training with flying colors there's still lots more to learn, but we'll have to head to another one of Bernie's zoos for that. If you want to grab your passport, we'll head off, shall we? Well, not just quite. I do want to go ahead and go into the zoo and... Mm, sounds like you've got the whole zoo purring away nicely. Well, purring, grunting, screaming, booming, <laughs> all the uh, appropriate noises. I guess I was right to hire you, huh? So I do know that there is supposed to be some additional things that we can do in this, but it really is not showing everything that we can do. I do know there were some stressed out animals that we're supposed to be able to take care of and some fix some additional habitats and things of that nature, but it just is not showing it. I don't know what the problem is. Increase all overall happiness to welfare 90%. Maybe because as we went through, we actually did achieve that. So it looks like that is going to be it for today, guys. We're going to go ahead and call it here. When we pick up next time, we will be traveling to a new zoo to see what we can do to help out in that zoo. So make sure you bring your passport along. Guys, if you have enjoyed this content, make sure you smash that like button. And don't forget to drop an emoji of your favorite animal down in the comment section. With that being said, like always, guys, I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.